In this episode, we are going to be talking about probe types. This is going to be a quick episode and I just want to make you aware that you have access to probe types when developing your React or Next.js applications because I haven't talked about this, that in this series and also I haven't talked about it in React 2020 series. So we are just going to quickly go through this. Of course, you will read the documentation uh, so that you know what other options you have available with prop types. And prop types are just a way for you to check the data that is coming into your component via props. So for example, you can define a prop type that you're getting uh, to in your component. And you can say with prop types, okay, so I'm expecting an array. And if you get an object, then prop types will throw an error and make you aware that something is wrong with your application, which will make your application be more stable and with less bugs. So you have a few options when you wanna check uh, your React application or JavaScript application uh, in regards to prop types or types of data that you are getting. Uh, as you can see here on their documentation page, it says that prop types has moved into a different package since React 15.5. Uh, it used to be baked in right side of the React. Now you have to install that prop types library. And also uh, if you want, want to do type checking for your application and your application is pretty big, then even the React creators are uh, advising you to use something like flow or TypeScript. Uh, and it says right here, for this reason, we recommend using flow or TypeScript instead of prop types for larger code bases. Of course, if you don't have a large code base and you still want to check your props, uh, then uh, you can easily use prop types because prop types are very easy to use and also uh, you can use them on a per component basis. So you don't have to use them on every component while using something like flow or TypeScript, they are going to type check your whole application. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use prop types. We use prop types at Human, the company I work for, for pretty much every application uh, if we are not developing it in TypeScript. It's a pretty neat way to get your types checked. And of course, check out this documentation. It has all the information of the available prop types that you have. So like array, Boolean function, number, object. Uh, it even describes uh, how you can create your custom types and so on. So uh, we are just going to go through a few little examples just to, just to show you how this works. But before we get to do that, we need to install prop types and we are going to be doing that right now. So first of all, I'm just going to cancel out of my server and I'm just going to do npm install prop types. Now, after this is finished, uh, you run your server again, npm run dev. And now you will have access to the prop types library and we can check the props that we are getting uh, into our components. So now in our index.js inside of pages, uh, we can just import prop types. So import prop types from prop types. And now as you can see this home component, uh, which is our front page is getting the movie props, movies props and T. So this is our translation function. Now uh, to define those props inside of prop types, you just do home prop types and it's going to be an object which is going to define something like T. So we are getting that T prop right here. So we are going to define t to be prop types that func and that is required. Okay, so this prop that we are getting, we are expecting a function. Now if I save this, go to my browser, refresh this page. As you can see, everything works, we are not getting any errors. But if I go right here and say, okay, so I'm expecting a string, for example. Now, if I go to my homepage, as you can see, we get the warning, fail prop type, invalid prop T of type function supplied to home. So we are getting a function, but we are expecting a string. 
that's why we are getting this error. So you will check that while you're developing your application and say, okay, so I screwed something up. This either needs to be another prop type, uh, another type of data, or I need to change the data that is coming into my component. So you can of course go right here and change this to be funk. Also, if we check out the movies, so if I do just movies right here, so we console log out our movies that we are getting on our front page. You can see right here, if I do refresh, you can see right here that we are getting movies and that those movies are in, array, in an array. And uh, you can see that uh, that array consists of objects. So for movies, we are expecting an array. And then you just go right here. We can copy this out. We want it to be required. Uh, I will explain required and optional a little bit later. So we do movies. Movies prop type is an array. Okay, great. Save it. Go to the browser. Everything works. We are not getting any errors. But of course, if I change this to be a string, or an object, then, then this is going to be a failed prop type because we are expecting an array. Uh, a, we are expecting an object, but we are getting an array. So you get the idea with prop types. You're going to get those warnings. Okay, so let's go to our card component right now. So just like on our front page or an index.js file, or we will just import prop types right here and we will define them down here. So this function name is card. So you do card prop types is equal to an object. So uh, of course we can just do something like, because we are expecting a movie right here, we can just do something like movie and we know that movie should be an object and it should be required. We go to the browser. We are still getting uh, this error. Let me just fix it on our index.js file because here we are expecting an array. Okay, now everything should be working. Great. Everything works. We are getting an object in our cards, but uh, what you can do with that, uh, you don't have to just define the object as your prop type, you can actually define the shape of that object. So instead of doing prop types object, if you want to check the properties that are in your object, then you do shape. And for example, you can say that you are expecting an ID, which is going to be prop type uh, number. You can also define other properties that you're expecting here, like movie title and so on. So this is going to be a number and this shape is going to be is required. Okay. So if I do this, save it, as you will see, nothing is happening. We are not got, getting any errors, but we are going to get an error if we define the ID to be string. So now we are getting this, uh, movie ID of type number is supplied to a card, but we are expecting a string. So now you will also get this error. So as you can see with prop types, you can get, go very in depth uh, with defining your types. You can do the same shape thing for uh, arrays as well as objects. So uh, you can define what type of data is going to be on, in your array and what type of data is going to be inside of your object. Or you can just define that you are expecting an object and uh, that should also work fine if you don't want to check anything inside of it. Now, uh, what I want to do next is I want to type check a year. So year is going to be prop types number. Okay. And it's not going to be required. Now, if I save this, nothing will happen. This is all going to work fine. Uh, except we need to change uh, this to be a number also. 
Now, as you can see, the movie is required, the year is not required. And for prop types that are not required, you can do something like default props. So you can define default values for the props that are not getting inside of your component. So uh, if you're getting data from some sort of API, like from Strapi, you may be getting data that are missing some of the props. So in those cases, you can define default props. So you just do card dot default props is equal to a uh, year is going to be one night 84 84 and uh, now here you define a year and since we are not sending a year uh, inside of our cards at least not on the index.js page uh, then we can do something like this so here we are displaying a title so I can just say year Okay, none of the movies have years. So if I save this, go to my page, as you can see now all of the movies have years and they are using the default year for the movie. So this is the way that you would use default props. Now, sometimes uh, you may not know exactly what type of data you are getting inside of your components. So in those cases, you can you have actually two options. So for example, you can remove all of this. If you don't know what movie is going to be, it can be maybe an array or maybe an object. So you can just do any, right? If I save this, go to the browser, we should not be getting any errors because now, our movie uh, prop can be of any type. Now, if you wanna get a little bit more control over this, uh, you can say to movie prop types, if you don't know what you're getting, but you have an idea. So maybe you can get an object or an array. So you can say one of type, one of type, and that is going to be an array. And inside those, that array, you can just add something like prop type types is going to be array or it can be an object. So this is if you don't know what you're getting, but uh, you know that it can be either an array or an object. It can be a string or it can be a number boolean or whatever. So if I save this, go to the browser, we should not be getting any errors. But if I change this to be string or number, now we should be getting errors. So failed prop type, invalid prop movie supplied to card. It doesn't give you uh, the types that you need uh, inside of that prop, but it does give you an error that uh, you have an invalid prop of movie supplied to a card. So you can change this again to be an object or an array. So that's about it about prop types. As I said, it's it was going to be a short video just to make you aware that you have access to something like prop types to make your development a little bit easier. Also, don't forget if you are building a large application, maybe consider using either Flow or TypeScript for that. So anyway, guys, this has been it for this video. Everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.